Welcome back you viewers to my channel of an everyday life of an Aspie. If you're new to my channel, I'm Aspie. I'm all about creating mental health and annoyance, sharing my life stories with Asperger's Syndrome, OCD and the like. Hopefully along the way I do some tips and advice along the way on managing and coping with your everyday personal struggles regardless of what they may be. Just to bear in mind as always that whatever I share with you all in managing and treating your symptoms of what you may be going through of your everyday personal struggle, of your mental health, this is your physical health or whatever it may be, that some of it was based on my life experiences and what i done. So give and take, respect my, you know, report of how I go about it versus how you probably go about it but just be in mind also if it doesn't work for you in the first time don't fret just do it little by little off step by step when I give you out the advice because at the end of the day you know it's not a sure file quick fix so it has been brought to my attention as always that I'm doing the narcissist and sociopathic kind of series at the moment because obviously this one is nearest and dearest to my heart obviously because of some of it will be based on my life experiences and the past of what I've been through and that at this point of time I'm wanting to try and raise an awareness and alarm for you all if you see any of the warning signs that I may bring out of certain people that you've dated within the past or present. It can be male or female however just to be in mind also just to clear up any misgivings from people but more on the side of it is a high statistic rate of actually males being the narcissist because obviously males don't obviously express their feelings and emotions by talking it out or whatever it is because of this day and age how it is how they have to just be the macho man carry on and not to you know cry over spilt milk or not to be able to just let out their feelings and emotions because it's a sign of weakness which is obviously we need to demolish that somehow obviously because at the end of the day we know basically that it is okay to show your emotions male or female but in a healthy positive manner just a disclaimer as always also before I continue on I'm a medical doctor so basically as I share these you know vlogs on my whatever it may be if you see any of the warning signs symptoms of either these series or the series previously that I've shared in the mental health series please seek medical help and attention for yourself or advice for yourself or your loved one or even just for yourself especially for this kind of one that I'm sharing with you all right now so basically there's going to be some how to's right now to actually address to you all and hopefully it doesn't sound too similar. This one's obviously the first part of the how to's which is how to deal with a narcissistic partner. So as we know basically when it comes down to it, if we're living with a partner who has these definite narcissistic traits, it's undoubtedly really challenging for us all. While you may love your partner very much or not anymore, their narcissistic traits can make it difficult for you to feel loved and return from them. So how you can recognize these potential narcissism is knowing that can at least help you to make sense of any seemingly senseless behaviors that they show. You know that for your own sanity as well, right? You may well or you both have a problem if basically of here are some of the 10 signs to look for when I'm asking this question about the narcissistic traits. So he or she, number one, expects continued appreciation and admiration from you and others around them. Two, overstimulates their abilities and underestimates the contribution of others. Three, fantasizes about unlimited success in whatever they do. Four, compares themselves very favorable with high status people, assuming only they will understand and truly appreciate them. Five, self and unreasonably demanding, having unrealistic expectations from you and others. Six, contributes very little to the relationship. Seven, has little or no empathy, often sneers, is contemptuous and overcritical of you and others around you. Eight, is unwilling to discuss your feelings or concerns. Nine, lacks insight into themselves and their behaviours. Ten, lacks appreciation of you, your feelings, your values, beliefs, morals, your interests and concerns of anything. He or she may also be utterly charming, interesting, entertaining and happy-go-lucky. It is no surprise then, however, that you found or still find yourself drawn into your partner despite all these difficulties that you may face with them. You may have only slowly come to realise that their personality is sad all about I, me and my, you and others may even thought of them as selfish, pompous, arrogant, snooty, overbearing, big headed and or a user. However, for some reason, for someone with narcissistic traits, his or her self-esteem often appears high, but sadly it is very likely to be fragile. 
Two, they cope badly with criticism, which can leave them feeling crushed. Three, so basically what I'm trying to share here is I'm hoping to hopefully help you understand narcissistic traits and give you some support and guide to this. I'll also hopefully my aim here to give you some ideas on how to make the most of your relationship despite the challenges that will come with it with these common traits. Now just to continue on, notice when how I never refer to someone being a narcissist as a horrible label. Okay? You can question that to yourself, right? Is your first partner truly narcissistic? A diagnosis of MPD, as I mentioned, can only be a made by a suitably qualified mental health or medical professional. However, regardless of the label, you have to live with them or not, depending on how you feel. And I, and I want you to know that you're in this right now and to feel that you're not alone. I've been there, done that. So the question may be running through your head is, what is wrong with them? The behaviours and fantasies and their traits that they're showing that are linked with might be understood as a defence against underlying matters. At least there is this psychodynamic right now explanation. So maybe it could be insecurity, unresolved conflict, unpleasant memories, unpleasant feelings, or it could be a rooted and being rejected in their childhood by the very people who should have shown them unconditional love and acceptance, which is their parents. As a result of this, however, they now def defend their feelings of rejection by continually telling themselves that they are perfect and lovable regardless. They convince themselves that they are self-sufficient and don't require warm relationships with others around them. This doesn't mean that they really don't need others, however, it's quite the opposite. They feel rejected, fallen, empty and depressed when someone leaves them. It's too much of a reminder of the past without their conscious, consciously making that connection again. A narcissistic person is very likely to lack any empathy whatsoever. So, how to survive in a relationship with someone with narcissistic traits? People with narcissistic behaviours are usually charming in the beginning. However, the self-centred view makes it really difficult for them to develop a strong long-term relationship. Their lack of empathy may even put your own safety at risk. I wouldn't be surprised if over time you have found yourself increasingly irritated, frustrated, stressed or desperately hurt. You may have got into a spiral of negativity yourself with disappointment stacking up and dragging you down. Your self-esteem may have dropped as a result of this. At the same time you still may love them or think you love that particular person. Before we continue on this video, I want to share with you that you've got to know that narcissism can come in many shades. At one end of the spectrum is malignant narcissists, the personality disorder that I clearly addressed to you all briefly what it is. This disorder is similar to psychopathy, although a psychopath doesn't care about being the centre of attention. If you even think you may be living with someone who has full-blown malignant MPD, I urge you to basically watch some of my videos that I've clearly shared so far. But I'm going to hopefully, maybe, I think from memory, I've already done some about the signs of an abusive relationship. So if I haven't, just look through my listings, then I'm going to link this playlist into my description below. Anyway, instead of read, watching the whole video, Basically, just to be in mind, you'll be at risk of financial, physical, sexual and emotional abuse. I'd also strongly advise you to seek professional help as soon as possible. But on the other end of the scale, basically someone may be displaying some really irritating narcissistic traits. Even just a couple of those traits can make it difficult to maintain a healthy relationship. Narcissists are people who are obviously self-centered, have an inflated sense of their own importance, a constant need for attention and admiration and a lack of empathy. Usually these people have a fragile self-esteem and are vulnerable to criticism. If you are married to a narcissist or you're dating a narcissist, hopefully this video can help you resolve or manage some of your husband or partner's behaviours. So here are some steps I'm going to talk with you all hopefully today along with some tips and advice. Again, 
so that you can get a clearer understanding to this so that we can know the signs quick smart. So part one is knowing when the relationship is unhealthy. One is determine if your husband boyfriend is selfish. Narcissistic people are generally extremely self-centered thinking only for themselves. They have um, inflated egos and crave for attention and admiration. They are highly self-absorbed and always looking for ways to be the best or successful than others. Because of this, the narcissistic husband and boyfriend may not love you as much as you love them. He may care more about their needs and interests while not caring about yours at all. They lack empathy towards others, unable to put themselves in other people's shoes or understand and care about what other people are experiencing. 2. Decide if your husband boyfriend is overly jealous. Narcissists are so obsessed with getting ahead and getting remuneration that they get jealous of other people's accomplishments accomplishments, success and the like. This can lead to possessive or even abusive behaviour later on in the track. 3. Ask yourself if your husband is manip manipulative or controlling, as well as your boyfriend here. Narcissistic husbands or boyfriends can try to control their partners by isolating them from friends and family which forces the spouse to be dependent on the husband or boyfriend. They can also try to control and manipulate their partner, spouse or what have you by not showing their affection her affection or tension. Some narcissistic husband and boyfriends can resort to verbal and or emotional abuse. They might make you cry or feel bad as a means of control. They might also result to tantrums and effect to control and manipulate their wife, girlfriends or what have you. 4. Determine if your husband lies. Narcissists usually lies to manipulate their partners or spouses. They tell half the truth or they are a highly incorrect version of the truth. So they don't have to take responsibility for anything. Many times that the blame is getting shifted to the girlfriend or wife. This is unhealthy to the spouse because they end up with all the blame, responsibility and guilt. Part 2. Dealing with your husband and boyfriend. Number 1. Talk to your husband and boyfriend if you can. Because you are married or are a couple or item, whatever the relationship status is, you should be able to talk openly and honestly about these issues when they arise. Remember to keep a level head when you talk to him. Be sure to strike a convincing tone and explain to him in a non-confrontational way that you're unhappy with the direction your relationship is headed. Avoid any accusatory tones and words. Narcissists don't deal with criticism. Tell him how his selfishness may make you feel. Try saying something like, I need to talk to you about your selfish behaviour. It hurts me because... If you're afraid after he is cheating or spending too much time with the other woman, say, you mean so much to me. I hear you're talking to her and I'm scared I'm not enough for you. If your husband says hurtful things, tell him your opinion means the world to me when I hear you talk to me about that way. I feel so small and with less in your eyes. Try not to yell angrily at your spouse openly discussing your hurt and fears is a more effective communication technique. Think about your husband and boyfriend's reaction to the moods on a scale from 1 to 10. If he is angry or upset at level 3 or higher, wait for suggesting therapy, mentioning it when his emotions are higher will be counterproductive. 2. Ask questions to understand where he's coming from. Asking questions is a technique that will flatter him because it focuses the conversation on him. Paraphrase what he tells you to show that you are listening when he talks to you. This also helps him in this in the center, which may help you move to your concerns later. Mirror what he says. If your husband boyfriend says, I feel that no one appreciates what I do, respond with, I know exactly how that feels. That must be very difficult and hurtful. Three, use the term we instead of you. When putting out his faults or suggesting a marriage relationship counselor, use we instead of you. This gives them the illusion of a shared responsibility and blame instead of making it seem like it was all his fault which may cause a negative reaction in a narcissist. Instead of saying, you hurt me be by being selfish, say, we hurt each other because we sometimes think more about ourselves than each other. Four, frame everything so it's not, so it's about his benefits. Narcissists really care about anyone else's needs. To get something you want, make it seem like it's all about him. If you want to go to a friend's house for dinner, don't say, I want to go eat dinner with Ben in case, instead of say, they really love you, they love, they'll love you, to have you at dinner. Convince your husband partner that doing things that for you reflects well on him. Say something like, by helping me cleaning the garage to show everyone how good you are taking care of me. Now, um, number five, approach marriage relationship counseling carefully. Many narcissists are violently against the idea of therapy, so you have to think carefully about what your wording when suggesting this. Making it seem like a shared problem that there are things you both can work through. Make 
may encourage him to agree to seek counselling with you. Take responsibility for your own actions instead of pushing it along him though, however. For example, so I'd like to see our therapist to figure out how we can communicate better and enjoy each other's company more. I want to work on ways for us to work better in our relationship so we can get, both get what we need. This keeps the tone not accessory. Commit together to attending multiple sessions. This is important because one session will probably not be enough. And this should for maybe three to four. Your counsellor can help you decide this, however. Number six, consult a relative or a trusted friend. Consulting a relative or a friend could help you deal with your husband, boyfriend. They also might be able to tell you how long this problem can, has been occurring. It's been like this since he has, was an adolescent or is it a recent development that has just persisted now. Talk to family members or your boyfriend husband about his past. Are there things in his past you can two can work through that might help alleviate this problem? Ask the friends and relatives what they have done in the past to deal with your husband. They might have more experiences than you. 7. Try to find the root of the problem. We have insecurities too just to remember, not just females. And sometimes they may make up for it, sometimes in discreditable ways. If the narcissistic tendencies are recent, try to find out what happened that made him start acting like this in the first place. Step into his shoes to figure out why he's hurting. Walk in his shoes. For example, if he's injured or you've just gotten a recent job, he might feel like he isn't adequate enough. Thus, he may be trying to direct attention to himself. If your husband boyfriend says, my life isn't where I hoped it would be, respond with something like, maybe not, but we have a lot of good things. We can work on things that you're not happy with. Then point out the good things in your life and relationship. Then help him make a list of things you can work together to make this change. If your husband boyfriend has been hurt or injured, tell him, Honey, I know you are not at quite at 100% right now, but that doesn't make you less of a person or a man. Or, my new job doesn't affect the way I view you. You provide more than enough just than just a paycheck through this relationship. 8. Find out if your husband boyfriend is willing to change. If your husband boyfriend is willing to change, there might be a way for you to do it through these problems. If your husband boyfriend is not willing to change, there may not be any hope to make the relationship better. Talk to him about his behaviours and see how he reacts. You can start with being honest by saying, I feel that I am being taken for granted and this relationship is more about you than me. However, this might not work for serious narcissists. Instead of site for conversation with Flurry, make everything about him. Say you are such a great provider and strong presence in this relationship and then go into your concerns very carefully. Number nine, give him little rewards. Sometimes trying to get a narcissist to do things takes a bit of work on your part. Try a reward to compromise. Try a reward compromise to encourage him to help you. This helps you to change his expectations from him getting everything he wants to him getting what he wants while you get what you want too. If you want him to mow the lawns, tell him you will do something for him after he mows the lawns. For example, if you mow the lawn for me this weekend, I will cook chicken wings and cake for your poker game next Tuesday. Make sure that the reward is after the task, however, that way he starts to understand he needs to help you before getting the rewards or getting rewarded. 10. Give him attention. Your husband boyfriend is your partner and deserves to feel loved. Giving him attention doesn't mean feeding his ego. Spend time with him, tell him you love him, decide on what activities to do after work or on weekends together. Teach each other of, of the, through the day. This kind of attention should please a narcissist because you are paying attention to him. Spend half an hour or 45 minutes together each night talking about your days to make sure he listens to you. Say we each speak can spend half an hour talking about our days or such as switching back and forth between stories. When choosing activities on the weekend, frame things where he is the centre of attention. If you want to go to the movie, say, I know you want to see that new movie, why don't we go see it? If you'd like to go on a hike, say, you'd like to, like, you look like you could use some stress relief, let's go for a hike. 11. Be patient. Remember that the large scale of behaviours changes always do take time. Don't expect an immediate change straight there and then. Continue to be gentle, compassionate, understanding and loving. Setting an example of humility to counter his narcissism. Don't be sarcastic or show false humility. Be honest as you assess his progress. Is he making an honest effort to change? Is he still treating you badly? Is the relationship with continuing to give you so much of yourself too? Part 3. Taking care of yourself. Establish a strong presence in the marriage or relationship. Make a place for yourself in the marriage relationship. Take some control over things, whether it is money, the house, sex or something else. Narcissistic people often think they are the most important person in the relationship. 
Make sure that your husband knows you are as important to the marriage as he is. Have humour in some of the situations. If your husband thinks he's perfect, use humour to dispel that notion. Help him see that he's not perfect, the best or the centre of the universe. Let him know instead of that he's important that, and that you love him. But other people are important too. Two, remember that you are worthy. Most narcissist people feel in feel entitled to the superior treatment. He might think, I deserve special treatment because I make the money and pay the bills. But nothing gives him the right to treat you or anyone else with disrespect. Be aware by that confront that by confronting your husband or partner can host a lot of other problems that may surface. Set a few ground rules and stick to them. Always set a time out signal you both may need to time to come down before continuing on a decision. If this doesn't help, then go for counselling before it gets worse. 3. Take back your confidence. Narcissistic relationships can negatively impact your confidence. Start building it back. Use that confidence to handle the situations your husband or boyfriend throws at you. Use it to stay strong when he lies and use it to stay calm when he may not respond well to your attempts to talk. Find hobbies. Part of gaining confidence in yourself is making yourself feel important and significant. Learn to sew, take a dance class, start running or start running, do something that makes you feel happy and safe. Four, learn to walk away. When your husband boyfriend loses his temper because something doesn't go his way, remember that it's just a way to control you. Walk away, leave the room, leave the house or roll your eyes. This lessens his power over you, which empowers you instead. Five, create a support system. You will need a support system since your husband boyfriend is not going to give it to you. This system can consist of friends, family or mental health professionals. They can help you stay confident, strong and feeling worthwhile. 6. Constant leaving the marriage relationship. If the relationship has gotten to the point where it is abusive more than you can handle or detrimental to your emotional and mental health, it might be time to separate or get a divorce or just walk away. Be yourself if you want to do divorce or just want to end it with your boyfriend. When talking to legal counsel, refrain from getting emotional. More than likely, the narcissist will be emotional too. So you want to present a collective person up. Present the facts as you explain your husband's behaviour without being angry or holding back. Be honest and factual. Present patterns of behaviour. Be careful calling your husband a narcissist because the legal counsel may not know what that means. Instead, show the words of his narcissistic behaviours. If you're looking for what you can do about the problems as I've listed before, here are some ideas and hopefully some of this will be basically similar to what I'm saying. Number one, be safe. Two, give yourself permission not to think about your partner or spouse 24 hours a day. Take time to focus on meeting your own emotional needs. Three, remind yourself frequently that you are still uniquely smart and lovable even if your partner suggests otherwise. Four, Use whatever resources you have to deal with your own pre-existing insecurities so that you get better protected against your partner's criticism. 5. Accept that you cannot change your partner, if only. 6. View the behaviour as a reflection of your insecurities. Don't take it personally. 8. Show your experiences with a trusted person, an online counsellor, a priest, a wise individual, someone you won't judge and won't blab unless you're in danger of harm. 9. Decide for yourself and write down what you do and don't find acceptable behaviours. Discuss it with someone you trust to make sure that you're not making excuses for their behaviour. 10. Set boundaries as per number 8 and decide what the consequences will be for unacceptable behaviour. No petty punishments though, however, just to be on one. You may increasingly feel that you can no longer carry on with this relationship. 11. Be okay with contemplating ending your relationship or marriage, even if you feel you're not ready for it yet. Can you ever... I hope to change things. Obviously, as we know, we can't forever change our partner. Not because he or she may be narcissistic, but because none of us have such power over other people, at least not under normal circumstances. All of us choose to change our behaviour on account of feedback, positive or negative, and self-reflection. Those with narcissist traits lack that capacity for self-reflection have little insight into their own shortcomings and impact on others. Therefore, it is unlikely that they will want to change. Therefore, bringing about the change in this kind of relationship is really challenging indeed, as I said, but not impossible. In any case, I would advise you that you get professional help before you end the relationship. Here are some tips that hopefully will be able to make your relationship work. Here's what might help. One, talk about why you're 
our relationship with others is so important, what it means to feel really connected with another person. Two, suggest any change without any reference to wrongdoing on their or your part. Three, emphasize the benefits to him or her, you and the relationship of a particular change or action so that it builds up their views of themselves of being good. Four, remind yourself frequently about what you do like about them instead of rehearsing what you don't like. Five, Help them focus outward away from me, I, my, me, myself in a fun way by asking questions such as, for example, who's the best teacher, who's the best student in class, who's your ideal personality around you and why, etc, etc. This is particularly important when you, your partner, spouse is depressed. Six, offer an option of someone else about a specific behaviour that might have irritated them, making sure you sandwich it very gently between positive. Seven, do your best to make connection about between their past hurts and behaviour now. The more pathetic you feel, the less likely to get you get into a spiral of negativity, honouring your own boundaries though. Eight, gain the interest if you can about the story of their lives of people around them. Nine, help them understand gradually and gently what others feel and might truly want, need or expect from them. Ten, oh I forgot the most important one obviously is be patient. Dealing with criticism. Someone with narcissistic traits obviously can find criticism particularly challenging. They may respond by behaving rudely and aggressively if criticised. Help them to recognise that no one is perfect. Each one of us, including them, has our share of importance and shortcomings. At all times, make sure that you feel safe. Remember the spectrum I mentioned above. Last but not least of these few parts to encourage you all is how to encourage understanding and empathy. Aim for some daily playful conversations together. Here are examples that may develop some understanding and empathy. 1. Ask them to guess what you are thinking about, likewise guess what he's got in his mind. 2. Take turns to each 10, ten minutes to talk about yourself, your successes, preferences, but also your failures and disappointments. 3. These types, just to be on mind though with these two examples, are, these types of conversations may help them to slowly and gently get some insight into other people's feelings. Be sure to start only when you're feeling positive and generous. Next one is basically, or the last one is, when is it? Time to end the relationship. There will come a time and a place that you, when you feel that you've truly had enough, enough is enough, you want to throw in the towel. Because it can be really hard to try and reward, have a rewarding relationship with someone whose main focus is on themselves. It's impossible to ever have a healthy relationship with someone who abuses you. You may have tried everything you could to help the relationship and even yourself to survive. You may have run out of ideas and energy and you've ended up with your self esteem in your boots. Know that it is okay to end a relationship. After all, it does take two people to commit and work together. It needs both of you to make the most of the fortunes, challenges and limitations in each of one of your personal as well as your joint resources to make a help, happy relationship. Well this quickly ends basically how to deal with the narcissist the partner. Give me a like for thumbs up support, comment below, share these videos around basically to family and friends. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Turn on the notification bell so you know when the next few new videos are up to date. So in all further ado guys, thanks for the support, thanks for watching, do what you love, love what you do. Until next time.